Hi, my name is Mitchell Phillip and I'm a student and game developer at Georgia Tech. I'm making this video to talk briefly about a fractal rendering experiment I recently made in the Unity game engine. I'm rendering this fractal using an algorithm called ray marching. I first heard about it from a video by Code Parade on YouTube, and I've since looked a lot more into how it works, and on a whim I decided to try writing my own in Unity. I'm fairly sure this particular fractal is called a Sierpinski octahedron, since all its faces are Sierpinski triangles. The key mathematical concept behind this is signed distance fields, or SDFs. An SDF is just a function that, given a point in 2D or 3D space, returns the closest distance from that point to some arbitrary shape. Most primitive shapes like spheres, boxes, and octahedrons are described by relatively simple SDFs. From there, you can transform the point you pass into the function to translate, rotate, scale, and reflect the shape that the SDF describes. You can use repeated reflection to create increasingly complex fractal structures like this one. This fractal starts with just a simple octahedron and shrinks it to half its size and reflects it to create six copies of it in the shape of a new octahedron. That process is then repeated, shrinking the new shape and making six copies of it. Repeat this process over and over, and you get an increasingly complex fractal. I don't want to get too deep into the ray marching algorithm itself, since other people have explained that far better than I could, but suffice it to say it takes advantage of the properties of an SDF to efficiently render the shape it defines. There are a few interesting things about this that I do want to discuss. First, a proper, mathematically defined fractal should have infinite detail. Each part of it should be composed of infinite smaller copies of itself. Unfortunately, that is not really possible with an SDF. It can't go on forever, and if you zoom in enough, you'll eventually find the basic octahedrons that make it up. Second, I programmed the player controller to actually use the same SDF as the shader to scale the player's movement velocity relative to how close they are to the fractal itself. This is really easy to do since the SDF already provides a calculation for exactly how far a point is from the fractal, so I can just plug the player's position into the function. That way, the player doesn't zoom right through the fractal when they try to look up close, but they aren't painfully slow when they look at the larger fractal. Lastly, I also use the convenience of the SDF to implement rudimentary collision. If the player's position is too close to the surface, the player controller can use the SDF to calculate the normal vector of the surface and push the player away. This was a really interesting experiment for me to try. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this in the future, but I have an idea for a game that could use it, so I may try making that. Thanks for watching!